Hello everyone, in today's video we're actually going to be doing a cast of a recent Face It League Masters game from Season 1. Now if you watch my Face It Explainer video you'll maybe understand a little bit of what's going on but the TLDR is there's basically a big round robin in Face It right now. The top 16 teams in EMEA in North America are competing. Of those top 16 teams we're going to whittle it down to a top 8 who will go into some kind of double elimination brackets, details to be confirmed, at which point the top 3 teams from that tournament will get a spot of the Esports World Cup which is obviously quite a coveted spot and lots of teams would like to go which means we actually get all the big boys are competing in this, SSG, Ents, Twisted Minds, Toronto, M80, they're all here. So. The way this system works is we're going to be playing a lot of games. I can bring you up the schedule so you can see, maybe see a bit of what I mean. But there's going to be a lot of action over the next seven weeks. We're going to see loads and loads of games. Each week are going to be two rounds, maybe even three rounds in, in week three. So a very packed week. And there's going to be lots and lots and lots of games. The teams are color-coded, as you can see, by the barrage of colors currently en entering your retina. At, which means there's going to be a lot of games that aren't that interesting, maybe very one-sided or for between a couple of the lower teams that maybe don't hold the same stakes. But there's going to be a lot of good teams in here at a certain point. SSG are going to play Ents at a certain point. Twisted Minds are going to play Ents and SSG and all of this. And especially with Twisted Minds, it's not so relevant to today's game, but for Twisted Minds, obviously you get to see the Koreans play for the first time, which will be very, very exciting. So what I'm going to try and do on this channel, and this is what this video will be the first of its kind, will be a series of casts of some of the games I'll cover live where I can on my Twitch. Maybe I'll link my Twitch now like I'm a professional YouTuber. And some of these I won't be able to catch live, but I'll try and get hold of the replays and do what we're about to do now and cast the replays so there's some sort of way to interact and view these games, especially for more interesting ones. But once we got on the card today is SSG versus Pep. So we are right here in the midst of round two. And there wasn't too many interesting results from round one. So this is the first sort of one of the big boys. First from OWCS stage two versus third. Now, many of you will obviously be very familiar with SSG. They were dominant. Maybe up until the grand final itself, they were pretty dominant. And even then, they clutched out the grand final. They made the necessary adaptations and Psycho really, really did the work when he needed to do the work. Meanwhile, Peps are a big up and coming team. We have players like Tread and Zodi who have been added to the roster recently. So quite a new look version of this roster, but one that impressed quite a few people. And even though ultimately they didn't come very close to SSG or Ents in those stage two matches of OWCS, they, they actually got 3 0 both times. But they're very much seen as part of a, I, don't want to, I hesitate to say new generation, but a new wave of players uh, coming up through EMEA. So it's really interesting to see how much progress they've made between then and now. And can they push SSG or Ents? closer and that's what we're going to see today so the way this the way this will work is we'll be able to go in game obviously for those of you who are maybe a kind of geo guesser experts you might recognize this as nepal the way this uh, face it league is going to work for the round robin at least is we're only going to be playing best of three so three maps maximum as you can see we're on nepal so it's going to be a pick and ban system the same as we saw in owcs the way we got here was Space Station banned Oasis, which is quite a common ban for them. Team Peps banned Samoa, which is quite interesting because obviously SSG did lose Samoa to Ents in that upper bracket final of Stage 2, but they did win it in the grand final. So maybe not unreasonable for Peps to avoid it, but obviously anyone who's watched a lot of the SSG games will know that they actually quite like going to Nepal. So it's no surprise that we've been taken to Nepal right here. As we go through the series, it's going to be Control Hybrid Escort is always going to be the map order. I think that's pretty reasonable, considering if you're only going to play three of the five game modes, makes the most sense. Also opens up the most to sort of bans and picks. So I'll talk you through the bans. I, I would show you on screen, but I don't want to, if I do it, I'll leak the result. And maybe some people are watching this, trying to watch this spoiler free. So we, we can, I'll, I'll talk you through the bans because obviously the bans are all done at the, at the top of the series before anything starts. As we move on to Hybrid. Peps banned Midtown, Space Station banned Hollywood, so Peps are going to send us to Iconworld. And then as we get to the Escort, Space Station banned Rialto, Peps banned Route 66, makes a lot of sense, take that dive map away from SSG. And then that opened up SSG to pick Shambhali. Obviously Escort, a very nice mode for SSG as they can send you to the dive map, but they're so happy to play Shambhali as well. So the fact that they can either take you to Shambhali or Route means especially in this format, where any potential map free is going to be on Escort, SSG actually have a huge draft advantage in a lot of these situations. But anyway, that's, that's all said and done. We can see the scoreboard on my screen. We're into Nepal. And 
we can we can start the action, I think. I don't think I've missed anything, forgotten anything. Mm. Mm. I'll drink some water, so hopefully you got some nice slurping ASMR from that. That's free. That's some free ASMR for you. I'll be sure to drop that in the YouTube tags. But other than that, we can start the action. So I'll be I'll be solo casting this, so it'll be very similar if you've watched any of my streams. We'll very much be doing a lot of that. Let's make sure my sound is okay. Yeah, let's crank the sound a little bit. And we're going to be starting here on Nepal Sanctum, which if you've watched SSG play before, you'll see they do, they'll do something pretty similar where they have Backbone play May. He's going to play from point, try and force for point, while the rest of them just control this top high ground. Obviously, if you're SSG and you're, you're worth your salt at all, you would have researched this, you would be expecting it. But actually, we might see something slightly different. Oh, wait, no, never mind. He is, he is on May. He is on May. Don't you worry. Don't you worry. So, no surprises here at all. We're going to get SSG just meeting toe-to-toe -to -toe with Tread on this other side. Both teams are going to vie for space. And once the point unlocks, you'll see Backbone. You see he's going to wall off the Sojourn and make his way to point right now. Meanwhile, the SSG quite happy to trade cooldowns. Ram into Sigma is a pretty reasonable matchup. The punches, everything goes through his Matrix. Now, Nagar is trying to put pressure onto Backbone along with that Zodial E. They've actually forced him off. So Backbone needs full pocket right now. Magnetic Grenade. They're desperately trying to help Backbone here. He's dueling Nagar. He is okay for now. And had he's actually quite FD got on the other side. Lamp for Backbone as well. So between him and Landon, they actually secure that point and this is why this strategy is so effective from ssg and this is why they love to pick sanctum because so far we've not really seen many great answers for this split split hold setup and this point focus control i'm just gonna turn it down a touch again just just a touch just a touch yeah 37 i feel good about 37 Retake now. Zodio's going to try and swing towards point. Window's going to come through. Hadi's going to try and disengage. Has to get lamped out. Staying in front of the window for that double pocket. We'll just be full blocking. Slow on it now. And SSG have conceded a bit of space, but Backbone still has control of a point. And this is the difficulty here. It's so hard to push this channel that Hadi and Tread are battling over. And it's really hard to push if Astro gets a boop off a map like that. And so far, doesn't look... Like they have the answers. Zodials will have a hard time getting out. Oh, maybe he won't have a hard time getting out here. Surely he doesn't get away. Astro is on the chase. Landon's on the chase with him. They will survive. Nagar has actually swapped to Widowmaker and Spawn. Just a cheeky one to try and get some pick. And now we actually see Nagar swapping onto May. And if you can't beat him, join him. That's what they always say. So it feels like we're going to get a bit of a May 1v1 on point. Don't know if anyone had that on the cards. And, well, I said it may 1v1, but maybe actually Peps want to overload this side of a point now. Look, you can see Tread playing by himself, and Nagar is actually going to get the opening pick. Ice Block is forced early, and now the Blizzard on top. So Nagar, I don't think, can get out of that one. We are going to beat Nagar as well. We just actually freeze. Backbone did it a little bit early. Backbone's mail was a little bit early, so they didn't actually get a freeze. Meanwhile, Astro and Hadi have tried to push with this beat and Annihilation, but they haven't got everything. So what was a very good hold... For SSG, now just falls apart and actually falls apart in a way that has cost them pretty much all their ultimates. They're going to come back with High Noon. Astro's Astro's not done yet. He should be done. Oh, he's going to get boomed. I don't think he makes hands on the edge. He's going to try and run. FD God is chasing. Astro's got the moves. Astro will survive. And they're able to stabilize. Now they come back on Reinhardt. So this gives, this gives SSG a few more options in terms of actually pushing this right-hand side. They put the pressure on Naga again. Backbone from behind, actually. So Ice Block is forced onto Naga. FD God is coming to help, but he's been walled off. Backbone's now fighting him, but it's a 1v2. Zodial's dropped a point as well. There's Overclock. He's got one. Hadi's going to join him, but... Oh, it's going to be the easiest Blizzard of the world. I mean, ultimately, that Blizzard was overkill, really, from Naga. They'd actually, they actually force them off. And one thing that's true with this sort of Mago point solo thing is it's... Obviously, if there's another May, it's much harder to retake than it is to hold the point in this sort of May 1v1 on point, which is kind of what we saw Backbone run into there. Even though he was able to force the earlier ice block, he was able to get the wall. He wasn't actually able to convert the kill. Maybe interesting to see, actually, when Backbone made that play, could Astro have helped him more? Could they have committed a few more bodies to that side of the point? Backbone's going to make his way on. You can see FD God is playing with Naga a little bit more now, but it's an aggressive window push, and they just crush the other side here. It's a really interesting thing teams can do when there's when both teams are playing a Lucio comp and it's a, it's a big wide map. What you can do a lot of the time is if you have some people here and some people here, 
if a Lucio is here and your Lucio is here, you can exploit the lack of speed and push this side. And it's kind of what we saw SSG do there. They noticed FD God was trying to stack this side. So Backman can play really slow, use his wall and my ice block defensively. Meanwhile, the rest of the group can actually just rush in, use that speed advantage, get all over him. They were aggressive with Landon's Widow and it worked. Now they're trying to touch the point, and I don't know if anyone touches the point. Zodiel's going for it. He dies for it now. Can Trent take over? They have actually killed Hattie, and now we have Beat, so it's really not over for Peps yet. They're coming back. High Noon and Mayo use. I think they're going to get the freeze. Be over the top. And this should put SSG over the edge. They're going to finish off Tread. Now it's a battle in the back rooms, but Landon still has land for him and Backbone. And they'll be able to clean up as a result. And maybe not as smooth as SSG would have hoped. The opening 75% was really by the books exactly how SSG expected no, at that point to go. But Peps made it a scrap. Peps made it a scrap. Maybe that gives us a little bit of hope. A little bit of hope for what we'll see in this next round. And it is going to be Shrine. It is going to be Shrine. So we'll wait and see if we have any changes here. Backbone might stick to the Sim on this one rather than swap into the May. I think really the May is very much just a... It's a Nepal Sanctum special for SSG. It's not something they'll run everywhere. We're actually going to get a dive look coming out from Pep. So Tread on the Doomfist, Crook on the Kiri. Which means slow and steady. Well, that wasn't slow and that wasn't steady. FD God's going to die immediately. Spark is going to continue his reign of terror in the EMEA. Get two picks before anything even really starts. They're going to chase everyone out here. They really want this stagger kill onto Tread. But he'll be safe. He'll be safe for now. And the fight was over before it started. Sparker is really sort of coming to his own recently in EMEA. Been an absolute powerhouse for SSG. And turns out... A few days later, he's still good. We're going to see a TP onto the high ground now for Hadi. They actually catch FD God there. They jump up. Landon and Astro are competing for it as well. And quite often when you look at a ground-based comp like a Lucio Ram comp, you always wonder, how are they going to control these high ground areas? Will they not just be exploited? Will a Doom and Tracer not be able to play up here, get a Sojin up here? But they use the TP and they do like a Ram Lucio and even Landon joined them. Like a Ram Lucio clearing TP. Just to clear and control that high ground. If they can get the kill with the slow, even better. And back to the drawing board for Peps. Now they want to come coast side. Tread and Naga have a little bit of space. Zodio is just swinging main TP onto Zodio. Spooks him. And they're actually going to... They didn't take the TP. It was a fake TP. They turn on to Tread instead. They're going to kill everyone behind. And SSG just seem leagues ahead right now with these TP... The TP plays, the decisions they're making, the way they're reading the game. And they're actually going to TP aggressively here. They want all the kills. Tread is back into spawn. They will be okay, and they can TP out and reset to point. And the, I mean, the mobility that Sim gives you is actually just unbelievable. If you're good at it and you know how to get the most out of it. Certainly, I don't think it's uh, um, hyperbole to say SSG are the best Sim team in the world right now by quite a large margin. Again, we're going to get just a TP for Hadi. Astro and Hadi are going to compete on that high ground. But all of Peps are there, so they can't... They can't clear it in the same way they did before. Now Tread's going to come in. Punch onto Hadi. No form for a little bit. They do isolate him. They actually catch Backbone out of that. They traded one... Well, they traded all right for a little bit. But the window comes out and Sparks will be able to get the cleanup. Looking for any more of these late kills. Astro's on the hunt as well. He's spotted FD God. Spark looking for it as well. Any late kill is good. Oh, FD God. Not where he wants to be right now. Now we're going to drop a Kiri ult, but oh boy, Landon is just cleaning everything up with Sparker. And they drop a Kiri ult. Spark still needs a bit of help. They have the Meteor Strike. They can keep this one going, but uh, they've not even used any ults yet, really. SSG. So they have all the ults to bail them out of this one, and it will be simple as you like for SSG in this final one. As <laughs> <laughs> all right. Thanks, FD God, with the stylish Ajax at the end. We'll get uh, the code for the next map in. So, obviously, um, obviously, that's going to be a successful, um, successful map. I can update the scoreboard. And I think this is my first time testing updating the scoreboard. Uh, it's very kindly made by Solomon. Um, and very kindly made to um, update so it doesn't obviously just have spoilers so it can work live while also working 
Um, um, working on... Working if you rewatch the series as well as just working live. So, here we go. Map number two, Icon World. This was obviously the pick by Team Peps. And they've got a lot of... They've got a lot to do. Even the Sanctum, even though it was much closer... It didn't really feel to me like I was watching a series where... It felt like a series where Peps were really improvising a lot of these solutions. It didn't feel like they had a clear plan in mind to deal with. Deal with the May on point. And they were able to scrap it out and make it close. And they won that one sort of big ult swing fight. But they weren't actually able to convert it. Now we're going to get what seems like, uh, well... A pretty, a, pretty, a pretty standard mirror matchup, if we're being honest. Ram... Bap Lucio, Cass, and Tracer on both sides. Which obviously means Psycho in for SSG. Psycho really a kind of a hero of the day for SSG in that grand finals against Entz. Coming in and putting in a hell of a performance alongside Spark to take his team over the edge. And we see Psycho trying to come from his left-hand side. But early, Tread's actually lost the HP battle quite aggressively. He's going to get booped back in. Has to be a lamp from Crook. And now, now they're in trouble. Spark has swung this right-hand side if you see him on... Uh, the top of our screen and this is one of the problems Ents were having in l large large quantity in the final and Spark was just flanking a lot finding these picks and Ents weren't able to deal with it and right here right now we see Peps not able to deal with it either so an easy first point five and a half minutes on the clock for SSG and a great chance to get a pretty decent time it looks like they're not gonna be able to touch before the gates either quite often you'll see teams especially in a broad matchup try and go before the gates to get an extra fight out because you have to wait for the gates to open no matter what but peps didn't feel they had the time for that right here and it'll be a slow and steady fight ssg happy to keep the cart moving for now they'll have window high noon everything coming up astro actually a little bit quicker on b as well as he didn't die in that first fight and it looks like it's going to be a safe drop from Team Peps to meet him on the corner. Slow onto Haddy. Haddy doesn't have to form for it, though. Now he can form at his own volition. We'll get this form out of Tread. They try and pop the lamp and the window pressure onto Tread, but they are forced back. Astro has to beat, but Peps' disengage seems reasonable. Crook has to lamp. FD God doesn't quite have it yet. Pulse bomb miffs, and Pep Peps have stabilized, but Nagas, well, Nagas behind alone, but he's actually killed Landon. So all of a sudden, there's a chance. Haddy's going to pop the Annihilation, but he's got no Baptiste to heal him. Haddy has to try and find the clutch. He's so low, FD God beats out over the top. And there's nowhere left for Haddy to go. Stuck in a corner. Our boy Spark is on what can only be described as an optimistic adventure for a trade. He won't be getting it. And the first hold is good, actually. Beats used by both teams. Window used by both teams, but... That Annihilation was invested by by Haddy, while Tread didn't have to use it, which means, you know, big Annihilation advantage. So it's going to be Psycho tapping the point first. Expect expect Naga to deny as much of his progress. Zodi will peek in with him as well. Difficult fight for SSG to take with their ultimate, so they're playing it slow and steady, trying to bait a drop and engage from Peps. Tread's actually going into the castle... Is he going all the way around? He's aggressive now. He wants to pop the Annihilation. He really wants to go for this. But SSG are okay on the disengage. They're all, they're all pretty beat up. But they have disengaged successfully. Tread tried to make the aggressive play. But SSG too ready for it. Now that Annihilation advantage is gone. And Zodio is going to be high nooning again on the high ground. But they actually, they actually kill him for it. That shouldn't have been possible. You think he would have been pocketed through that. Now Crook's going to drop the window. Can keep Tread pocketed. SSG once again forced into their hidey hole. But Psycho's been moving the car this entire time. Look where the car is. And now Psycho's killed Nagger as well, actually. So now Crook is in this difficult situation. Crook's going to drop and die on point. Well, try not to die, obviously. But Spark's swinging up with him as well. Tread is still on the high ground. They deal with Psycho. Sparker is still quite far forward. And Peps have stabilized a messy situation. But you have to feel now... SSG again. A bit more of a right to walk than they once did. The slow is going to make Landon's life a little bit awkward. Psycho's going to go right side here to C9 and potentially. So Naga has to be wise to that. But Naga is busy harassing the rotation. And Psycho's got him behind for free. He's killed two. Might kill a third. FD God is running. But Psycho has decimated them from behind. Thought he was going to play for the car. But he, he thought he'd get a quick 3k before getting on the car. And seems a reasonable choice. Seems a reasonable choice. 
They were so focused on that rotate, they lost track of the tracer. Psycho gets in. And because of all that cart progress Psycho got back in the previous fight, even though they only won one fight on second, they won the important one. And they'd got the cart to that final that final checkpoint. And now the time looks really good, but magic pick from Zodial. And they'll actually be able to steamroll them over here. They don't have to use any ults for it either, Peps. So this is a big chance to stabilize for them. This final part of Icon World, there's not a lot of fancy stuff you can do. It's just a corridor. It's just a classic corridor, which means you kind of ultimately have to win either a fight where you get a lot of picks or you win the ult exchange. It's the most common way to actually succeed. And we're going to see Peps even hold outside. They have all the ults coming up. As do SSG, so a big ult trade now. If, if Peps can win this one and a lot of ults are traded, it can actually put them in a pretty good situation to get a lot of time off this block. They're trying to come in. Pressure onto FD God. Has to be careful. We'll be able to get back out to his team. I'm going to enter the corridor portion. Form used later by Tread and Haddy's going to lose the HP trade now. He has to back out. They have to lamp him out as well. Psycho's trying to get a bit of space, but SSG have been slowed down here. Crook still has the lamp, so a significant advantage. And they're actually going to commit with the Annihilation. They don't want to waste any time. Tread is all in there, but he can't get through the window. Beat from FD God. They really want to go through the window now. Later Annihilation. Beat comes out later as well. They're using all their ults to go aggressive and to go first here, actually. Trying to force the fight round the corner. It's often it's, it's good to be aggressive. It's good to set the tempo to go first. But a lot of the time, if you just have a good choke, like maybe this choke here, for example, well... You can just hold the good choke. Now, it was a heavy ult exchange, so we are down to uh, just a pulse bomb for SSG. But, oh, FD God's going to get caught again. Window comes out, High Noon get caught out, and SSG gets a disengage two for free. The ult usage again questionable here from, from Peps. They now peek afterwards, and SSG are all in. Psycho's trying to keep an eye behind for this Tracer. Had he's lost... For, on the worst end of his HP trade. I think Tread has form soon as well, so can push aggressively, but he's he's usually slow. And actually, just catch Astro. Astro caught him the slow, and now they're forced all the way back. Nagger is on Landon, so he will fall. And Peps, once again, have the stabilization. Just about. Nagger can be able to do so much. I mean, Psycho and Hattie doing a fair amount as well, but the respawns, the numbers advantage, will just about mean Peps can hold on. And now, to be fair, considering the time bank they were facing on third, this is a pretty reasonable situation. One minute left to hold. They've got Pulse Bomb. They're nearly at high noon and Annihilation. A lot of their ops coming up slightly sooner than SSG. And if I'm SSG, I kind of just need a play. I kind of just need a play from one of my DPS. Difficult to win uh, in this ult trade. That beat advantage for FD God might be crucial. You can see Naga hiding on the left-hand side here. Slow on top. Doesn't go for the Pulse Bomb with it, though. Obviously, Landon does still have land. They're just trying to pepper them in and Naga's actually gonna have his recall force so Psycho spots it. Psycho wants to be aggressive now. Annihilation and window over the top. So he uses the high noon but he's focused down by the window. Lamp wasn't there to save him. Now the B comes out for the high noon from Spark. Puts a lot of damage into Tread but he's still going. Astro got to his beat though. He got to the beat. They push back. Crook with a desperation window but he's got a ram on top of him. FD God. Level one crook. They're so slow. They're trying to hold on. Zodi was going to get the touch. He's there, but he's completely outmanned. He's completely outgunned. Tread is back on Doomfist. And he'll fall. And crucially, or well, potentially crucially, 6.2 seconds left on the clock, which means that if Peps was a full cap, then they would be able to have time left to repush as well. But uh, it still felt pretty one-sided. It felt the first point was obviously a bit of a no-go. A classic spark of flanks. Caps for point. Second point, a very point-focused or objective-focused point for SSG. We saw Psycho get a lot of cap value and then a lot of, well, a lot of pulse bomb value. A 3k to finish it for them as well. The third point, they did run into more issues. And maybe there's something there for, for Peps in the fact that once it got to a more standard fight... It actually did feel like they were able to go a little bit more tit for tat in some of these alt exchanges when the map was a little bit simpler, when it was harder for Sparkle or Psycho to find these more open parts of the map to exploit. So maybe there's something there. Unfortunately for Peps, they need to they need to capture first and second before they can get to get to that situation again on the attacks. So a lot still to answer for Peps. I think the big thing I'm I'm looking at from Peps right now is 
I think about there was sort of a few fights, right? There was the aggressive annihilation here and that was disengaged. There was the high noon here and that was disengaged. There was the window high noon on the third and that was also disengaged. Uh, so it just feels like there's too many of the ults, and obviously this is, this is what SSG are known for. They they will walk away from danger. You got a scary ult? We'll just walk around the corner and we'll come back in a few seconds when everything's settled down. SSG so good at it, and it's given them the advantage in some of these fights against against Pep so far. Now the attack, and in a slight split initially, and Astro's gonna kill Zodial, which uh, isn't really how you want the fight to start. Unless you're Astro, of course. He's probably pretty happy with that, the whole thing. They're going to push forward to try and get a few more kills. Hadi's actually taking a lot of damage, and Psycho's going to be the one who gets caught. Now a chance to swing back into the open. They will have that Zodial spawn a lot faster. Chance to swing. Obviously, they can still hold similar positions while we wait for Psycho. He will be back quickly. Naga's going to exploit this timing though to get in this left-hand side. And they've actually pushed, they pushed SSG back into the corner. Now Hadi, no form, no full pocket. A bit of a mess. We, we actually... We we're talking about a lot about SSG's disengaged versus ults here, but a slight split through these two areas just disconnects the healing from between Landon and Hadi, and Peps capitalise. Peps capitalise. They're able to get it, and a, you know, clean first point from SSG on their attack. Clean first point from Peps on their attack. No ults really available yet either. Again, Peps are going to get the gate for free. Hadi's going to drop to the corner. No one else dropping with him yet though. Landon's going to come down now. Trying to keep Spark pocketed on his high ground as Astro while Psycho marks the castle area. They've got a lot of pressure onto Naga here. Doesn't really want to have to recall. We'll go for the dive onto Landon now, but it doesn't result in a kill. And Psycho's actually hard chasing Naga right now. They have to lap to save their tracer. Save their tracer they do, but it's going to force Peps to all take a step back while they wait for that cooldown. Window nearly available for Crook. Window a classic one to open with, but Landon has it as well. Astro playing quite close to Hadi here. Window comes out as they try and swing up this right-hand side. It's a really wide swing from Peps. Landon's got the... Well, he did have the window to match, but he just gets shot in the face by Zodial. And now Peps can use all this space to keep swinging. They've got the beat if they needed to keep going, but I really don't think they do. Hadi's a little bit isolated on this right-hand side. If they turn and kill Hadi now, Spark's going to swing with High Noon, but damage is done. They're booted out of it. Only results in a one-for-one -one trade, though, so it's still a dogfight, but Ram advantage for Peps means... They get control of a point, and SSG are going to take the reset, try and hold on to this high ground. Pep's still on the low ground right now. Pulse one miss from Psycho. Peps need to figure out their next move, because they're still forcing point for the moment. Are they just going to try and continue to play underneath? Hadi's coming from the left and side here. Goes top instead, and now Peps are going to do their rotation. But now they have to rotate into Hadi. So Hadi can just hold this choke. Peps are going to go the far side. Naga is behind him here. Do SSG know? I don't know if they know. High noon swing. Lamp is forced. Landon has to try and clear this one out. But there's a ram in front of him. A tracer behind. Landon gets pincered. He'll get focused down. Hadi wants to turn with Annihilation. But FD God has the beat to match. Now they're putting more pressure onto him. Tread has lost a lot of health. Just about gets the Annihilation. And that'll be clean up for Tread. Good beat from FD God. Astro didn't have a chance to use that one there. So they are coming back with beat advantage. Still a very good time for Pep so far, but they've got to win this crucial last fight. And they don't really have anything. Astro has the beat. As long as Astro gets the beat off, well, should be a pretty significant advantage to convert and hold here. Swinging out the choke initially. Slow on the choke will make it a little bit scary. He's going to beat out early now. Wants to try and make an aggressive move. They've just killed Tread with it. Lamp not there to save him. And well... We thought the beat would be a significant advantage, and it turns out it was a significant advantage. They're able to stabilize. Still three minutes to hold, though, and now the cart is so close. There's this awkward situation for SSG where they want to try and control top in this area, but they've got to keep Psycho on the point. Because if Naga gets behind us, it's really c 9 here. We'll see how Peps choose to approach this next fight. Naga's going to get in this left-hand side. Holding onto the high ground. Naga's got all the way behind. Have they noticed him yet? Psycho's close enough. He's just hiding to meet point here. So Naga shouldn't be able to see 9 it for free. Psycho's going to spot him now. We'll take the 1v1. And Psycho seems to have a better for it for now. But Naga's able to play the health back. They're trying to rotate at the same time here. They pinned the tracer back. Astro was going for the boop. But they're keeping this fight going on point here. Psycho trying to hold on to his cooldowns. They're going to meet in castle. Tread's got the HP advantage now. And maybe I think has form coming off cooldown soon, but they're going to go top of it instead. They want to meet them right here, right now. Window is available. High Noon's going to be used. Window's exchanged. Tread has to be the lamp. Spark is so low. Astro's going to get boot back, and it's, it's kind of just a stalemate. It's just a stalemate right now. 
And he wants to make the next move, though. High noon from Zodial. Tread can play body blocker. Crook is on the floor. And it's actually Psycho who is caught by that one. Boop from FD God, I guess, set it up. Now they're pushing forward. Annihilation from Haddy. Beat from FD God. Only catches two, though, on point. Only catches two. So Haddy gets the kill onto Tread. FD God is trying to group with Crook. Crook is still somehow alive. Him and Nagra are cleaning it up. But the point's been C9, actually. The point was C9 through all of this. Oh, a bit of a disaster from SSG, and suddenly three minutes on the clock, and this third point looks... I mean, it looks awfully doable all of a sudden, doesn't it? Astro has a beat advantage coming back, but Tread has the annihilation advantage. So it will be a classic bit of push and pull here. We've seen Tread be very aggressive with these annihilations so far. He's not had a lot of success being aggressive with them, but this one is probably more of a clear opportunity. I don't think they'll be calling this in the old track here, Peps, but I actually have a small window before Astro has beat as well. I think Tread will just go when it looks good for him, though. If he thinks he can connect to slow and walk on some squishy looking people, he'll get that annihilation on the go here. Spark does have the high noon as well, which can make Tread's life a little bit harder to walk. Spark's taking a lot of damage. Slow comes out. Tread doesn't go on that timing, though. Slow and steady, and it might actually just be a window to start in this fight now that Crook has it. Window to start the fight, then annihilation to push it in. Still needs to find a way to work around this beat, but can be done. Now the windows come through. Trade lamp is forced as well. I think Crook's managed to hold on to his lamp. He drops it now, actually. Chance to go again with High Noon around the corner if they want here, Peps, or even an Annihilation. That lamp is out. There's the High Noon. Tread's going to drop the Annihilation as well. Beat comes out. It keeps him alive for now. Later, Beat comes out from FD God. So this Annihilation can keep going. Pulse Bomb onto Sparker. Takes him down. Now a clear advantage for Peps, and they are pushing it all the way in. No reprieve for SSG and Peps. A clean ult exchange in the end. Really nicely done. They do the window trade. They get lamp out. Once that lamp is out, they go with a very aggressive two ult push, Annihilation and High Noon. But High Noon makes it really awful for everyone to walk. And it means everyone has to sort of back up anyway. And Tread is just pounding them in the face with Annihilation. Wow, that happens. So a nice finish actually from Peps. And well, we said they might be all right if they get to third point. And they were all right if they got to third point, And they actually got to second. Probably that fight at the end of second where it felt like SSG C9, had a C9 mixed in there. Because um, it was a really ugly beat from FD God, actually. He only caught two people, but it, it ended up doing the job. So Peps may be a bit fortunate to get that one. We'd have to watch it again to see. I mean, I guess I guess we can do that half of the map, right? Actually, I have the power. We have the freedom in the replay just to go and watch it again. But we'll finish this one out because we are going to overtime, actually. Peps map pick. A Ram, Bap, Cast Mirror on Icon World, and it is time advantage for Peps. We spoke about at the start of the series how in OWCS, when they met there, it was very much a 3-0 to SSG, and it not just a 3-0, but maybe it even looked like Peps had too much of a look in for actually getting a map. So a big shift there, at least in, in terms of the immediate power level. And SSG put in a situation where they maybe need to kind of clutch a little bit again. Standard hold. Now, neither team had a successful first point hold. I think it was to be fair to say. We'll see how they choose to take this one initially. A classic hold from Peps. People on both sides of the pillar. Psycho's going to try and work his way in this right-hand side. SSG trying to give a little bit of misdirection about which way they're going. Annihilation to start... Oh, sorry. Form to start the fight from Hattie. Slow doesn't connect on anyone now, and Tread's got a much later form. Tread can push back now. He's put a lot of pressure on him. Forced him all the way out and has forced that lamp. Now the slow onto Astro. If anyone's there, Astro's in big trouble, but there was no one to follow up. I think the Tracers were caught up fighting each other as, as the Tracers often are. But you actually have to use the lamp late here, so... A uh, technical lamp advantage for Landon, but won't be in play for a while. Now the form trade again, and Tread is looking at Landon. He's got Landon in his sights. He's got Landon on the mind. He's pushed him all the way back, but it's actually Spark who gets the kill. And where is Spark? He's on the flank. He's done it again, the big man. Wow, this is going on. We're focused on the push and pull, and ultimately it felt like Tread got pretty enga could engage with his form, ultimately. But they lost track of Spark. It's probably part of the reason Hadi's losing some of this HP trade is because Spark is playing a bit of a looser role, taking a lot more flanks, so you don't have that same frontline pressure. But ultimately, if he gets those kills and he wins the fight, do what you want, Spark, mate. Get those openings. Now, overtime. And this is where it can really snowball out of control. Overtime spawns, one loss fight means you'll lose a significant part of the map. Starting on high ground with high noon and window. Everything else coming up soon for Peps. 
Annihilation is actually there quicker for Tread. The window trade comes through again. They're trying to catch Hattie, but the post bomb behind is met. But it pushes him into Lander's line of sight now. The beat over top. And SSG might just keep this one going. Tread is going to not get to his ult. And it's probably for the best, ultimately. They can save this for an ult advantage on the retake. They will have beat and Annihilation, which are pretty good ults. Astro had to use that beat, but... Heart Progress is going to get wild now. Wild now from SSG. This is the one Peps can't afford to lose this one, really, because this will be second cap if they lose this one. And God knows what happens on third at that point. And he doesn't quite have the Annihilation yet, but we'll have it by the time this fight starts. Hard to play a sort of push and pull or disengage any ults when you have to say pin to cart here. So we'll see how SSG play it. Be over the top now. Pressure onto Astro. The boop is good though. Astro's got the boop onto Tread. No chance to use the Annihilation. Oh, it's a bit of a disaster. Zodial still coming on the flank. It's not over yet. Spark is 1 HP on point. Nagger is in, but Nagger is now in a 1v2. He surely can't win this one. He will die. The point will fall. And oh my god. Astro with the boop. Astro with the boop. God damn, that was, it was actually the perfect play. We asked, we were talking about how can you take a, an Annihilation versus beat an Annihilation type fight? How can you win that trade? You boop a ram off the map, you can. And also, how did you even use Annihilation? So now it's all advantages for SSG. Coming back in, Tread starts the fight aggressively. He is in deep. He still has Annihilation if he needs it. And he probably needs it. Lamp and Annihilation pop. Now the beat comes back. But now it's Haddy who has this Annihilation. And oh, the Pulse Bomb wants to Tread. They don't save him. They can't save him. And SSG, they've got... They've got their fingers on W. They are pushing FD God with a crucial trade, actually. Maybe there's a bit of reprieve. Crook is going to window. They think they can win it, but no. Hadi's still got that annihilation. High noon's going to be used. Hadi's looking for the kill. He's low on HP. He just keeps everyone isolated. They've cleaned up FD God. They're still swinging. Shield just in time to save Zodial's life here, but SSG, they don't have a bat. But Landon is coming back as fast as he can on Kiri. High noon soon for Spark and nothing on the side of Peps. Tread's going to try and swing aggressively. Hadi keeps. Point touch. Now the high noon swing. Where can Peps go? The lamp is good, but they're so low after lamp. They're going to pile on. Psycho is traded. Zodial. He's got two. How much can Zodial do? He needs to do more. He can't finish Landon, though. And Hadi should be able to clean up FD Garden. One more touch from Naga. Surely not. Tread on Doom. Not enough. And oh my. We talked about how it can really get away with you, away from you in overtime if you lose a couple of fights and the enemy team gets such big distance. And I mean, that's certainly what happened there. Certainly what happened there. And now all of a sudden, that minute and 23 advantage that Peps had looks to be nowhere near enough for the task ahead of them. Another full cap. Another full cap is required. SSG came up when it counted. Big plays. Sparkle with a flank on first. Astro with a boop on second. That was the real one. That was the real one. Because it not Astro's boop on that point didn't only win them that point. It also meant that Hattie didn't use Annihilation. It meant that Pep's wasted beat. So Astro's boop not only wins the immediate fight, it actually wins the next fight as well because of it swings the ults in such a favorable situation for SSG. So, I mean, that's why you sign players like Astro. Because <laughs> he's pretty good. So a big, a big task ahead of Peps. Obviously, bear in mind we're only playing, we're only playing uh, best of three. So they have to win this map as well. Which means the the situation for Peps is they have to full push the map, and then they have to take another overtime fight and win that as well. The task is mammoth. They've got a lot to do, but. We were skeptical of how well they do on the initial attack, and they certainly proved us wrong there. So they need to prove us even more wrong now, because this one, this one's harder for sure. Now I guess going to try and make his way in with FD God on his right hand side. Easy to match, easy enough to match that for now. But Tread's going to come this left hand side, which is going to pull Hadi across. And Tread's trying to give him a bit of misdirection here. Wants to hit the slow, does hit Sparker, but no real follow up on that slow. They're trying to get Nagger in this right hand side, but Psycho's there to match it. Astro's trying to help him out as well. Landon standing at the back of a point, anchoring everything. Tread looks for one more with his slow. Doesn't find anything that significant. And now form advantage for Hadi. He can try and find something to push back. He is going to the other side of shield. So limited heals, but he does find the slow. Psycho was able to get behind. Spark push left side. And they just push both flanks. Pressure both sides at the same time. And Peps collapse. 
Obviously, they had a significant time bank advantage, at least at the start of this overtime. So they've got another decent fight. They'll have Window coming back for it as well here, Peps. But all the other ults, all the other ults in this fight goes on a bit, are leaning SSG's way. They've got a faster high noon for faster beat, for faster annihilation. Difficult fight for Peps. Has to be a slow back and forth. Have to try and live some of these ults from SSG. They're going to swing left-hand side. Window's going to be popped out. They get some space on point. SSG going to fully TP. And Sparkle wants to go left side. But it's Lantern who gets caught. Actually, now the Annihilation's popped. He can trade Crook. So there's no Baps on the field as this beat comes out. But it's player advantage for Peps. Astro and Hadi want to chase down Tread on his right-hand side. But it's just Astro going for him. He's just fighting a Ram. Run, Astro. Run, FD Gods on the chase as well. And Peps have an opening here. They're going to chase him down. Annihilation is popped from Tread as well. That should be the finisher. They catch Hadi. Cost him quite a bit. Crook is back on Kiri as well. I expect him to maybe swap after this cap goes through. Yeah, you can see him making his way back to spawn already. B advantage for FD God. Annihilations were both used actually as Crook goes back onto the BAP. So it's going to be Window and High Noon for SSG. High Noon and Beat. For Pep. So, actually, a great chance to win this fight, honestly. And ults will be pretty even afterwards. So, have to win this one. Early swing from Zodiac with his high noon. And Hadi's getting pushed in. He's getting pushed in. He's still getting pocketed, but he's just got deleted. And that's the best way to kill a Ram. Ram's blocked us so much. But if you can get a situation where someone's shooting the Ram from this way and someone's shooting the Ram from this way, he's only got so many arms, but it's not over yet, actually, because Landers managed to trade Crook from the high ground. FD God probably has to go taxi, really. They need. Crook back sooner rather than later. Sparker is swinging. We're into overtime, so that is ticking down. And it's actually Kiri is back on. Lando's going to drop a window. Peps DP it for now. FD God is going to get one touch. He has to be careful. He has beat. They're actually going to beat out. But what can they push with this beat? What can they push? They're going to swing underneath Cart. They're going to throw a magnetic grenade at Sparker. But SSG will wait this one out. In their cozy balcony retreat. And now they swing with a hiding of their own. And Tread needs help. Tread needs so much help. They're swinging up top. Naga's going to have to get the next touch. Crook is still trying to push this high ground against Landon. And oh, the point just goes while it's all happening. The point just goes. And that will be... That will be 2-0. That will be 2-0. Wait, can I... Mm, that will be 2-0. Yeah, I updated the HUD, but obviously it swapped the sides again. I wanted to go back and look at a few things. We can look at um, just maybe a few of the key plays. Maybe some, some post-game highlights. I'll see if I've got the, the technical wherewithal to do some post-game highlights. So let's look at this C9 again, right? Because this is a really difficult situation. I don't know if I agree with the beat. Uh, it's, it's, it is a really difficult to fight to take when you have to stick over time. I think I would have rather seen something where they leave Naga on point. And then they all just go up here with beat or something. And they're like, just fuck it, we're beat pushing. I think that would have looked a little bit better. Because um, they leave Tread on point in the end. And now Tread's super isolated. The high noon's going to come out. Tread's going to get focused down. Nothing that Tread can do. They're trying to come out as high ground. And then... Now I can just get one touch, but has to recall for it. And I just can't get the second one. The wick's, wick's super fast, actually. And then the other one I think that's worth seeing. I know we can see the Sparkle one on first. I don't know if it was anything that was really in the, the crazy category, though. Uh, the Astro Bleep is the big one to see, right? So a classic push and pull back. And yeah, Sparkle's just going to swing left side. Nothing all too crazy from the big man. Nothing all too crazy. But opening pick does the damage and they take care of everything now. Let's, uh... Oh, which fight was it? It was the overtime fight. To, but just before this one, right? Let's go all the way back. All the way back. Okay, yeah. So they're coming up here. It's such a difficult situation ult-wise. Uh, being Annihilation, such good ults for pushing. They actually help each other push even more as well. So they come in. Tread's going to make the aggressive move, as he often does with this Annihilation. He's coming. He's coming. Ah, just off the edge. See you later. Landon's going to get... <laughs> Landon gets booped as well. FD God. Unfortunately, Astro's boop ends up being much bigger value. So FD God does get betrayed, but the damage is done. And I mean... I think it's pretty obvious what boop of the day is. Has to be, has to be the boop onto Tread. Force him off the map. No chance to use the Annihilation. 
And you think if they didn't win that fight, the cart probably stops here or something, right? And you look where they got to here on overtime. This is like the Pep's push. If SSG had been stopped here, it's, it's maybe really scary. I think maybe this overtime fight was the one you maybe can look at and feel like Pep's could have done a lot better. But ultimately, it was probably the defense. I think there's more situations where I just felt like our first couple of annihilations didn't get value. Our, some of our windows were quite easily disengaged. I think they lost most of the window trades, if I'm being honest. I don't know if they lost most of the window trades. Similarly with High Noon. Similarly with B. It, it, alt value across the board. And maybe this is always true when you lose a series. That your alt value is probably worse. But it felt like that's more where they lost it. Compared to in the neutral. There was a couple of times in the neutral where Spark just got the opening flank or something. Which maybe Peps could have dealt with better. But I think ultimately it was the alt game it felt like SSG had the clear advantage on in this one. Um, but really, um, I think we have to say... We have to say relatively, relatively by the books from... SSG, a game you would expect them to win, a game that they did win. The overtime, even though they were forced to overtime when I can walk, it's actually still pretty one-sided, right? It was like a 6-4. A, a they came out clutch when they needed to. And yeah, I think that pretty much sums it up. I guess if I should I give a player for match? Should I give a player for match? Um I'm trying to think. Player for match. Is it maybe just Astro? Uh, maybe that's like a A got the boop of the day. All these beats were good. Got an opening pick on Zodial. A really solid game. I feel like supports never get it. Um, I think had I think to be fair, all of SSG had a pretty solid game. Um, there was no everyone everyone just played well. They won the alt fights, looked pretty consistent. But I think ultimately, yeah, probably Astra. Astra got like the big headline play right. Spark didn't do like his normal carry level of performance. Didn't need to, honestly, either. Um I mean, I think to Nepal as well. Yeah, he got another big boop on Nepal as well, didn't he, on Sanctum. Yeah, let's give it to Astro. Astro, player of a match. I don't have a graphic for it, but just imagine Astro's face popping onto your screen right now and doing doing a cool pose or dropping the fucking beat. You know how it is, but hopefully you enjoyed the cast. I'll be doing more of these. I'll be doing some of them live on Twitch. I can maybe put my Twitch here as well, pointing at it, pointing at it. Put my Twitch here. Check out on Twitch as well. We'll do some of the games live, especially a lot of the EMEA games. I think I'll do some of the Toronto games as well. And we'll also do a lot more of these replay casts. I'll try and get the VODs from YouTube and the, the ones I just record directly for YouTube, both on YouTube. So we'll get lots and lots of basic games on here so you can watch a lot of the action. But thank you for joining me today. I hope you enjoyed the cast. Obviously, if you have any feedback or just any abuse you want to send me, leave it in the comments. And I'll, I look forward to doing some more of this.